Ana Isabel Rodrigues, um, I would like first of all to um, to, to say thank you to the to the WebKDA and Ludo Media for inviting me to be here and to share some ideas with all of you. And also thank you all for being here. I hope it will be interesting for you and I hope I can share uh, my path uh, in visual methods and visual data analysis. Um, my name is Ana Isabel and I come from the Polytechnic Institute of Beja, located in the south of Portugal in the Alentejo uh, region. The title of my presentation is Applying Visual Methods and, uh, and Analyzing Visual Data. And then I will finish uh, trying to uh, show you uh, uh, a little bit of the software. Uh, but th that could be an another webinar. But for now, I will focus on visual methods and visual data. And then I will show you some examples on how I use it to do WebKDA, the software, the qualitative analysis uh, software that I've been uh, using. Uh, since I begin uh, my path in visual methods. I would, I would like to share with you, the, this is just a brief agenda of, uh, uh, of my presentation. I hope, I hope I will not take more than 45 minutes, but first of all, I, must, I, I, I want to share with you that this is a challenge of, of my, during my life is trying to, uh, trying to be synthetic because I have uh, so many things to share and uh, sometimes it's difficult for me. Uh, I have to be honest with you. Uh, this, the, I will begin with uh, some initial thoughts uh, and then with a pictorial turn in qualitative research. Um, why, why visual methods and visual data analysis uh, is, is important in qualitative research. And then uh, I will uh, focus on visual methods uh, and uh, visual, just let me put this because I, sometimes I want to show you uh, apologize because I want to show you sometimes this to highlight some ideas. Uh, uh, then I will go to the visual methods and data analysis. Uh, I want, uh, I would like to say to you that my focus now, uh, it will be on static image photos because this is a vast world visual, uh, the, the visual methods and visual data analysis. We can talk about different types of visual data. And in this brief presentation, this, this webinar, I would like to share with you with particularly the case of photos, static image. And then some ideas about the visual content analysis. Uh, I mentioned visual content analysis. It's the technique of content analysis, but apply to pictorial, pictorial data. That's why the name of visual content uh, analysis. And then finish with uh, a brief overview about the web KDA. Oui, sorry, just. Uh, my name is Anne Isabel, as I mentioned. I teach uh, since 1997 in the Polytechnic Institute of, uh, of Beja, and my academic background is in tourism. I study tourism, mainly tourism and communication, and I have been teaching in our graduations uh, here in Polytechnic Institute since 1997. I finished my PhD uh, related to tourism in 2000 and at, the, uh, at the end of 2015, uh, and then I must, uh, I would like to share with you that this was my contact with the visual methods. And since then, uh, my PhD allowed me to discover the world of visual data, um, visual research methods and visual data uh, analysis. I started from, from there. I would like to share with you just the next slide is about uh, the, my, my path uh, within visual research med methods. VRM means visual research methods. This is just a brief timeline. I must say to you that I'm, I'm in an infancy stage because I, I'm not really an expert, but I have been uh, uh, dealing with this research for the past uh, three years. And this is just some, some uh, articles and some work that I have been doing with the, uh, other colleagues the, the, from, uh, from, different, from different institutions and also from the Polytechnic Institute of Beja. And I, I would like to share with you that, that everything, my, my path in this, in this um, field started in 2015-16 with my PhD. And then since then, I started to, in my uh, thesis, I use, uh, I analyze photos and I uh, analyze interviews, textual data with uh, pictorial data. And, and since then, I'm I, I trying to, to continue this work. So 
that's why I, I think that I, in, in, in terms of a life cycle model, I'm in the, in the beginning of this long uh, journey and I wanted to explore more in the future. That's why I, I'm, I would like to share with you and also to hear your, th your thoughts and also your comments that will help me to uh, improve uh, my thinking about this. Um, so my path, sorry, my, the next slide. Um, this is my, my path. Um, oops, sorry. This is my, my, my path. Uh, has a two, is a two-way intersection. Uh, my path in the last three years, uh, because I give classes, I teach, I have students in several subjects related to tourism, mainly related to tourism, has a, a field of, uh, of studies um, in our tourism graduation, tourism, and my path in visual methods is mainly related with the, uh, the tourism uh, academic research. Uh, I, I have been uh, using visual data in a, a tourism academic research and also uh, I would like to sh also share with you some uh, works and some exercises and some pedagogical uh, exercises that I have been uh, using with my students, uh, trying to discover new approaches uh, and uh, new uh, pedagogical tool tools, mainly related with visual methods and the visual data. I will try to, to, to share also with you some of these exercises. That's, that's why in the, in the, in the, in the, in the middle, is qualitative uh, is visual uh, research methods that I applied in my field uh, of research tourism and then also in my classes and also with my uh, students uh, for starting just this is just some initial thoughts uh, I, I brought here the phenomena of emojis I want to share the, this this documentary with, uh, with you my slides uh, I uh, uh, ask Sonia and then I, I will send you also my slides that will be also available uh, for all of you. And then you, then you have all the links and all the references um, uh, if you want. And this is just a, a, a documentary from the W Deutsche Value channel that I've been following uh, for several years. Years they have a very good documentaries, and uh, this documentary has two weeks about emojis, who has the power. And this is the movie of emoji, and this is just some example of um, uh, one of the books, the semiotics of emoji, the rise of visual language in the age of the internet what i want to 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 now i would like to, to start with this uh, with this idea that we live in a world of uh, pictorial uh, symbols and uh, probably this documentary mentioned uh, uh, that uh, if emojis were a language uh, will be the single most used language in the world because he's used by 2.9 billions of people all, all over the world in two, 212 countries um, um, as has this documentary mentioned. So this is considered, has, uh, is considered the body language of the digital age. And uh, uh, this book the, uh, uh, has, um, has this question, are we, live in a, are we living in a prehistoric age of a new form of communication? Or is emoji writing a passing trend? Or is it a, a truly new form of global writing? Why I started the, with emojis? And this is just a, an example. I have a screenshot here of a, an article published in the Routledge in the Journal of Human Behavior in Social and Social Environment that, uh, that is studying the emojis. What does the scientific literature say about them? A new way to, to communicate in the 21st century. So we have this new type of uh, communication that is based on icons. That's why you have, we have the word nowadays, emotions, means emotions we pass uh, to each other, emotions through icons. So my question is, are we having, are we um, uh, passing to a new form of communication? Uh, probably in the future, this is just some thoughts, uh, our methodologies, the methodology that we use, we'll have to apply this new reality and and they will have to change. And that's why I start with this idea. So this is just an example. Uh, will we develop in the future new methodology applied to new types of data? This is just an example. Uh, I find it very interesting from a mood network. If you want also, you can see the slides and then you can search. 
the, the, this group, uh, the microanalysis of online data network. This is a network that has been studying the, 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 application, the application of uh, conversation analysis in digital online uh, data. And uh, one of the, one, this paper here, published by these uh, authors, in 2015 uh, has this interesting idea, digitized methods in qualitative online research. So we are, we are in a changing phase. That's what I, I would like to share with you. We have now ethnography, uh, uh, it's apply uh, to the, the reality of the internet and uh, the, the mood, net, mood network is, is working since, the, since uh, a few years ago. The application of conversation analysis in, uh, uh, in, uh, in a, a new form of uh, data because we have forums, we have chats, we have Twitters and conversation analysis as a method needs also to apply to this new form of data. I'm, I never used conversation analysis, uh, I must say to you, but it's the idea of this network that is working on the application uh, on a method, conversation analysis, but uh, one question, they ask this question, what about the visual, uh, I ask this question, what about the visual data? Do we need to simply adapt textual based methods and techniques to visual da data? Or in the future, we also need to create new visu visual based methodolic methodological approaches because we are living in an image ecology age. We, the, the human being needs to interact nowadays with images and then we have to adapt. These are the, the, some ideas that are ex, uh, extracted from this uh, article. They, they mention that the methodology needs to adapt uh, and probably we, we will have, it's important to create new methodology because we are having totally different types of data, mainly because of the internet, textual data and also visual data. That's why uh, I, 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 I thought it would be interesting uh, to start with these uh, initial thoughts. This is a, um, a, a thought from Gillian Rose uh, from the, uh, her book, Visual uh, Methodologies. The Visual Methodologies uh, uh, was published in 2000, I think it was in 2001, and then we are in the fourth, uh, fourth edition. Uh, from 2016 and Gillian uh, Rose, um, the author that has been, uh, it's a cultural geographer and has been working in visual, uh, visual methodologies. In, in her book, she, she mentioned that we need to use, uh, you use your methodology to discipline your passion, not to uh, didn't eat. So we, have, we need to have disciplines, we need to have a methodology, and that is one of the premises of this uh, presentation. When we use visual data, we need to uh, explain everything, what we are doing, what type of methods are we using, what kind of data, why did we use this type of da data, what was the source of our images, of our pictures, uh, are, are they, uh, uh, they, they, uh, they complement the textual data? Data. So we need to uh, uh, to explain uh, our um, our decisions uh, in order to credibilize the use of visual material in our uh, in our work. Because one of the things I've been read uh, in the in Banks book, uh, Banks it's also a sociology a sociologist and has been working on visual data. And in, her, in his book about visual uh, data and also visual methodologies, he mentions that we need uh, the visual data is not yet recognized from the scientific academy. So that's why we are we we, we have a, um, a very important future and a very important work to do. And the the next slide. So the. The first topic about, I would like to share with you is this one, the topic one, the pictorial turn in qualitative research, the use of uh, uh, visual research methods, methods like uh, Mitchell uh, mentioned in his book of 1994, The Teacher Theory, uh, we are uh, living now uh, in a pictorial turn 
we, from language turn, we are now in the pictorial uh, turn. And Professor and Mitchell, uh, an American uh, Academy and a professor, uh, in his in his, his article and his book, the picture uh, theory, mentioned uh, this: the importance uh, of um, the photos and the, uh, the importance nowadays uh, since they complement also the textual uh, data. And this is the first uh, idea that I would like to share with you. So uh, regarding qualitative research, I will not take too much time because uh, uh, probably uh, most of you work with qualitative research, but I'm just trying to contextualize the use of visual methods. So, uh, in fact, uh, when we use qualitative research, we, we, uh, are, uh, we want to study a phenomena in their natural context. So, uh, this kind of approach, the qualitative approach, um, highlights particularities, specific specificities and details. Uh, and that's why a visual data can bring something new to the qualitative research. Another uh, important uh, idea uh, is that from this author, Irish, uh, all the authors are in the references uh, at, uh, in the final of the slides where you can see later. And he mentioned that we, uh, the scientific activity falls in a set of spatial temporal uh, social historical coordinates and we need to adapt our methodology in order to um, in order to uh, try to adapt to these new uh, social historical coordinates and that's why what we are doing at the moment as I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation we are in a very important change and transformation uh, uh, um, and also with this, unfortunately, with this situation that we are living nowadays, this also will change how we do, uh, uh, how we do research and, and also how we, we collect data. Because nowadays, nowadays we need to understand what kind of methods we can use because we are in a, we are entered in a new, uh, in a new reality as i can say unfortunately for bad uh, reasons so these are just some thoughts uh, qualitative research is related with uh, the, the we using methods that are appropriate to the object of study so when we decide to use a visual methods or a visual or visual data we need to understand if they really uh, brings value to our research uh, and that's why we have a field here, and the Banks mentioned this in the, the last edition of his book from 2018, in 18, that we need to uh, um, adapt uh, and, and bring new approaches to our, um, to our uh, research. And different types of data. So we have text, but also we can have different types of data. Uh, example, the visual ones. Uh, visual, not only static image photos, but also use dynamic image like the videos. And the videography is another world uh, that I would like also to, in the future, to uh, do some research about videography. And these are type, different types of data that we can use in our uh, research. So the pictorial term is here. And why? Uh, these are some thoughts uh, from different authors because the images are truly important nowadays because we live in, a, in a, an common economy based on experiences, emotions and sensations. Uh, Poole mentioned uh, this uh, when uh, has this, uh, this thought about the visual, uh, the visual uh, economy. Another thought uh, that we have is that we live in a world of images. Uh, Mitchell mentioned also this. This is a very interesting uh, um, thinking about uh, Mitchell in his book, uh, uh, the, the picture theory, uh, visual construction of the social field. So we are living nowadays a, a visual construction, construction. The social field is made of images because we, need, we have our sense, the visual has our, uh, our sense that we use in the daily life, but we need to also to use in our research. And the age of ocularicentrism means that we live in the, the it's the hegemony, uh, Jay uh, mentioned this, it's the hegemony of uh, vision has our uh, human sense. Um, sorry, and then another thought, that uh, is um, uh, Mirzoev in uh, his book about visual culture mentioned that visual culture is, is everywhere and, and nowhere. Uh, we are surrounded by, uh, for instance, social media. 
with lots of images and sometimes uh, these means of communication are everywhere but sometimes they are nowhere because we have a lot of information and we really don't know what to do with this information. Another um, <clears throat> uh, interesting idea is that uh, Haraway mentioned this uh, when we have visual is always a matter of power to see. So the, uh, she mentioned this, the situated knowledge. Uh, she mentioned that uh, we, we all, when we look to an image, we, it's always a partial perspective. And that brings uh, several discussions, interesting discussions uh, in, uh, in the individual research methods, because we need to be uh, objective, but in the middle of a subjective subjectivity when we use visual uh, visual material and then another sorry another um, idea is that uh, vision is never singular and evolves all sense and modes of psychology um, so the next slide will uh, focus now sorry on the use of visual research methods so what are really what is really visual research methods and now I must cite uh, Gillian Rose again because in her book visual methodologies it's a very interesting book for someone who is uh, dealing with these uh, with these topics i would should suggest this i have the book with me i i don't read yet the book all the book but i read the the, the main topics that are related with visual some visual methods and some visual data so it's like a very uh, a complete book uh, and also of course the book of banks and also the book um, uh, the book of uh, Pink's also. And uh, she mentions that visual research methods are methods which, are, which use visual materials of some kind uh, as part of the process of generating evidence in order to answer social science research questions. Uh, I highlight these two ideas that are in yellow. Visual materials of some kind, we can use uh, visual material, as I mentioned, we need to organize our ideas. Are we going to use uh, a static image, photos, drawings, pictures, paintings, uh, even uh, emojis? For instance, this is something that I will, I'd like to do in the future, is, is trying to interpret it, some emojis uh, related to tourism, when people are in, the, in some destinations and uh, they express their emotions. So what they feel when they are experiencing a destination, and sometimes they don't use words, they, they use emojis. So they are interesting um, uh, articles that are already have uh, um, like a, a way of uh, reading a methodology of uh, interpreting emojis. Um, it, this is very interesting. And then uh, the another idea here, yellow, and yellow at the end of the, the, the citation, that we have a, a very diverse group of methods. So I will try to explain better this uh, later. And then another idea, uh, visual research met methods provides a more authentic perspective. Uh, this is just an opinion, of course, an opinion, a, a perspective. And sometimes when you use pictures, for instance, when we ask to, to the participants to take pictures and then we bring our picture, the pictures uh, and, uh, and, uh, and do an interview, uh, I will mention later, the photo elicitation. This is an authentic perspective because we are asking people to comment their pictures. So it's very authentic and very, it's very genuine. Uh, and this is the richness, the richness of the visual uh, data. And that's what this author mentioned. And then, uh, sorry, the idea of humanness and effectivity of research participants. That's why we, uh, we are now enter uh, uh, in this very interesting topic within the qualitative research. Of course, uh, this is not new. Uh, that's what this slide mentioned. The, the anthropology, first really the anthropology in the 60s with the, the works of uh, uh, Collier, uh, when they started to use photos in anthropology and they, they did, that was very interesting when they realized that the photos could ha uh, could uh, uh, had value to their to his re, uh, their research, and th this could be photos, mainly photos took by the researcher himself, 
uh, when he was studying some uh, uh, human phenomena and then he started to use also to take pictures and then uh, try, uh, started to analyze those pictures. So this was the beginning of, uh, I, I can say, in my brief experience with, uh, I have lots of things to read in the future, but this begins in the anthropology field. Uh, and then, as I mentioned here, uh, Professor Harp, Harper uh, in visual soci sociology uh, brought the use of photos and was the beginning of photo elicitation in visual uh, and sociology and mainly in visual sociology. Uh, that's why in the, end of, uh, the, in the end of the slide I, I have uh, this idea that the use of visual methods was widely diffused in the social sciences in the 19s. So that's why in the 19s, uh, the, the visual methods were widely, widely, uh, widely diffused, and and now, in the beginnings of the the um, in the beginnings of the twenty first century, with the books of Gillian Rose and Banks, also because the first book of uh, of, of uh, uh, Banks uh, uh, from visual uh, data and visual methodologies is from two thousand and from two thousand and seven, and the Gillian book is from two thousand and one. The the, the 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 academia started to um, started to research doing research in this field. <clears throat> the next topic. So this is just a screenshot about this important article from uh, Douglas Harper, uh, as I mentioned, published in two thousand and two, uh, the the talking about picture and. It, it is a milestone. It's it's important article when we are using, for instance, the photo elicitation as a visual method, when where he defines the photo elicitation. In in a, as he mentioned, uh, in a simple idea, uh, it's a simple idea of inserting a photograph into a res, in, into a research interview. Uh, and probably um, there are participants in this webinar that use the photo elicitation and, and it's very interesting because we can uh, uh, do an interview based on photos and the photos can uh, be uh, the, the photos can be from the participant himself or from the researcher uh, but we need to we need to um, justify why we are using those photos that is very important and Another, uh, the next slide, uh, it's, it's about the, this idea of the visual uh, research method. So the, the, the visual allows the, the visualization of intangible dimensions. Uh, Wind cup means uh, express this. When we are using photos, sometimes we are just, it's a way of uh, extracting information from the participant and sometimes very intangible information because it's about feelings. Uh, or, or for instance, when we take in my field, tourism, uh, the visit, visitor employ photography is another method. When we ask to the tourists to take some photos and then we will try to analyze their photos. So this is very interesting. And also the another idea is this one, the use of visual uh, data can encourage participants to engage in, in research more creatively. So we can have uh, a, a creative way uh, on, on, doing, uh, on doing research, can have something, something a, a different approach. And the other idea from, from uh, Samuels uh, uh, of this uh, of his chapter, uh, the title is When Words Are Not Enough, eliciting children's experiences uh, he, where he used visual methods to try to elicit some thoughts and emotions from uh, children. He mentioned that visual research methods focus on what, what is truly important. Sometimes the images can really focus, help us to focus not only the researcher, but the participants uh, on, what, on what is really important. And also the use of words sometimes alone cannot express all the elements. Pink, this Pink has a very interesting uh, uh, also book from visual, visual methods and visual data. In, her, in his book uh, in 2004, he mentioned, he mentioned this. Um, so uh, we can use words and then we can use pictures. That's why uh, we can combine image, combine with interviews, can enrich uh, data. So the next slide, we are in this, uh, in, in this, well, this is a thought that we'd like to share with you, also comes from 
uh, a, a work that I've done with some colleagues, with other colleagues, Antonio Costa and also uh, Teresa Alvaz Garcia, where we can but we, we conclude in, in these uh, papers, uh, in these uh, articles, that presently qualitative research has a new and insightful universe in terms of analysis and interpretation of social reality. And that's why we enter in topic two. So this idea of visual methods and data analysis. Uh, in this case, particularly in this webinar, because it's, uh, it's not, uh, we, we cannot uh, and because I'm also in the beginning, and as I mentioned, I have experience with photos, uh, and also I would like to 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 have experience also with uh, videos, and uh, I will focus now on static image photos. I have here the three W one H question. Uh, I created this because this is why, what, where, and how. So one of the things that I would like to share with you what I did in my PhD and what I have been trying to do over the last three three years when I use visual data is, is, this, is this, always try to explain why we use visual data, why we use visual data, why, because if you do not explain that, uh, uh, well, we can think that we use photos or videos because sometimes it's a trend and it's a trend also in research. And if, if, we want, if we want to believe that it's not only a trend, but it's really an innovative way of doing research, we, we need to uh, explain why did we use photos or videos or, uh, or, or paintings or whatever, what type of uh, data image, visual data we use. What are we using? What, what kind of image, uh, uh, images? Where did they come from, for instance, are images from the participants, from the researcher, or for instance, from the third source that I will have a slide here, from the internet, because we have, we have uh, uh, um, works that are using uh, the, the, the uh, lat uh, latent uh, corpus, um, uh, and Eric Souza mentioned that in, in a paper. The, the, lat, the latent corpus, corpus that is the data that is in the internet we have nowadays the, the social media and with uh, with facebook and twitter and uh, for instance in tourism in TripAdvisor, where we use photos but we need to explain and that another topic that i will not have the opportunity to the, to mention here but that will be a very interesting topic in the future is the ethical the ethical topic uh, i'm starting to have uh, to, to, to try to understand better this because they are this about the ethical aspect of using visual data. Uh, that is something that I would like to uh, explore more in the future. And where, where uh, and how, how, how can we use, uh, how uh, can we use our pictures? And that's why in the, at this point we have two approaches uh, uh, in, uh, regarding the literature review the, that I've Done, uh, and I will continue doing. We have this per perspective. It's a, a sort of epistemological discussion. The visual data, for instance, um, Rose uh, Rose asked these: uh, Are we are we construction? Are we constru uh, are we in constru constru construction of theory and methods applied to the new and op omnipresent pictorial reality? Probably uh, visual methods and visual data will have their own field of study in the future with their own methodology, with their, uh, it, it, it is something that is very interesting to think about it. Or uh, probably as Professor Banks mentioned, it's just a tool for analysis. Does it add value? Does it enrich conventional methods? broadens perspectives of analysis, but this is just an extra uh, a citation that comes from uh, this book uh, of Banks 2018 uh, that mentioned here, uh, he, he mentioned that his, it is perhaps more accurate to speak of adding a visual dimension to conventional methods of data collecting or accentuating those that are already present. Uh, so it's, it's better to do this than trying to uh, 
think about a distinctive or a new uh, a new way of, uh, uh, of uh, new methods and a new way of doing research. So this is something that it, it's interesting. It's a kind of uh, epistemological discussion. So uh, my question probably is this at, at this stage of my research. Uh, what will be the future for visual research methods as a subfield of qualitative research? And that's why I share here uh, these ideas. So we have these ideas, images as a stimulus. So we can have visual methods, image as a source of the methods. We can, where, uh, we can have a more active role of visual elements. So uh, we can use visual methods, some examples, reflexive photography, photo voice, photo licitation, photo diary. Uh, and this is related, more related, as I mentioned, with static image, or we can have, this is another uh, uh, role of visual element in qualitative research. The visual has data. We have visual, but not as a method, but data. We have pictures to analyze, and we have the, the visual data has corpus. Uh, that, can, that can be itself, for instance, we can, have, we can have a work only done by visual material or we can use visual uh, data to complement the textual data. So we have here the, the visual data has an, a unity of for analysis. That's why uh, in this field we need to understand, as we have photos, what kind of methods and techniques are we going to use to analyze these photos. Uh, semiology, social semiotics, compositional interpretation. I uh, will try to focus more on content analysis, and that's what the, the we, you can do uh, with the qualitative softwares, mainly with WebKDA, that really helped me to organize my photos, to import the photos to the software, uh, and also to uh, do content analysis, to look to the picture, uh, describe the picture, and interpret it as a picture. So uh, I must say to you that the, the, the use of uh, uh, qualitative software analysis really help us, not, not only in the analysis, but in, uh, in, in, uh, in organizing our data, because sometimes we have uh, textual data like interviews and we have videos and photos and we can import all this to the, 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 the software uh, that can help us. But when we use the visual data is a manual, um, use uh, uh, it means that we need to see every each picture and try to describe the picture and extract information from the pictures uh, and that's why it's important to, to think about this the source and the role of the visual data as i mentioned from the researcher from the participant uh, or the pre-existing or a third source the from corpus latent or are we going to use pictures that are in the internet and if we can use those pictures and what kind of source uh, are we using uh, that it, the, this is the the, the the like a passive role of the visual element this is just some thoughts that i have been or trying to organize for the, the last two uh, mainly three years but mainly two, two years so we have here the photo licitation uh, i would like to share with you that this is important uh, in the future if you use and some of you probably with more experience in this field than me, uh, using visual materials, we need to choose our method. And then we, we need to, of course, need to understand what is the method. This is just, uh, uh, I, I'm sharing only about photo elicitation. What is photo elicitation? This is just some ideas, description, and the application of the photo elicitation. And uh, if you use the uh, photo elicitation in our projects, in our research, when we are using an article or sometimes with a thesis, a PhD or a master thesis, we need to do a very a good literature review about the methods that we are using. If we use a reflexive photography or photo voice that will give uh, space to another webinar and probably with different another person that uh, use photo voice. The photo voice is give voices to the photos and also is a methodology that has been used mainly uh, started uh, in the in the health field and then also in the education uh, field, the photo voice as a visual uh, method. And this is just an example. And then this is 
uh, an example from the tourism uh, field, uh, uh, the use of photo elicitation, exploring tourism experiences with researchers found images. Uh, so this is trying to analyze the experiences from tourists using photo elicitation. And they, this is the, 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 the photos that were used was from the researchers found images. So in this article, we really understand why uh, those photos, why the, the, the researcher used those photos and not other photos. And he explains that. That is a very interesting because he explained all the methodology in order to give credibility uh, 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 on, on the work, uh, about the work that he is doing. And so this is just uh, another uh, example in the field of tourism. And then I try to, to pass this. And then the visual content analysis applied to photos. So I would like to share with you at some, uh, some steps that are very important. So the first things that we need to understand, the content analysis, as you know, it's a, a, a technique of uh, uh, analyzing textual data, but we can also uh, uh, use in visual data. And so these are the answers that I have uh, already uh, mentioned, type of visual method, type of visual data, the role of visual data, the source of visual data. For instance, when you use a, a, a software, a qualitative software, we need to understand the different softwares that we have and how they can uh, uh, help us. And, uh, and uh, what kind of uh, technique are we going to use to analyze, for instance, our pictures? In my case, I have been using content analysis, but uh, in the future, I would like also to uh, use the uh, semiotic, a more semiotic approach. So, this is the technique, I will just pass this. These are just some thoughts about content analysis in general, the content analysis as an analytic technique. Of course, you, you know, probably most of you know the, the works of Krippendorf and Bardin about the, the content analysis. And these are just some ideas uh, that allow us to make replicable and valid inferences when is really well done and then Krippendorf mentioned this, that content analysis can help to conceptualize the, a portion of reality. And then the other ideas from Miles and Huberman, uh, the book has some years, but is very interesting when they mentioned in 1994 that when we use content analysis, we can use photographs, videotapes, or any item. Uh, so we can use content analysis also to visual material. And so when we, are, we try to apply uh, to visual data analysis, what Rose mentions, we can use a more quantification approach of content analysis, uh, uh, means that we can, we can look in a picture and trying to extract the elements of a picture and trying to quantify uh, the, the elements of a picture. It's a more quantitative approach of, uh, uh, of content analysis, but we also have a qualitative approach, we can say that, of content analysis. When we use, for instance, when we use the, the, the a software the, such as WebKDA, when we have our pictures and when we start to analyze the pictures, we describe the pictures, we describe what we are, uh, what we are um, analyzing. That is a more qualitative approach uh, of content analysis. And then, these are, I have already mentioned this idea, and then we can undertake a qualitative analysis of images by describing and interpreting them. That's why uh, we, when, we have, when we do content analysis of photos, uh, this is just some thoughts that um, uh, me with Teresa Alzar Garcia and uh, Antonio Pedro Costa in an article uh, of the, that is going to uh, be uh, uh, publish, uh, published where, where we, we try to explain a little bit of uh, the process and the stages uh, of doing uh, content analysis and content analysis uh, applying to uh, photos and that, that I will try to mention here, mention also this here. Uh, sharing some examples from the last three years. What, what can I, uh, I, I would like to share with you um, from my learning experience in classes with the students, exploring visual approaches. This is just an exercise that I do with the students uh, with reflexive photography. And then uh, I, I ask to the students to take pictures. And then based on the, these pictures, I use the reflexive photography as the method. And then we try to think and discuss concepts uh, about tourism, like tourism experience and like uh, uh, um, satisfaction, 
but based on their pictures and and they are here uh, in the beginning of their uh, of uh, their exercise uh, where they use camera to take pictures and will use this methodology and uh, this is just some some uh, um, some things that i would like to share with you we have here visual data there uh, their pictures i ask them uh, uh, to take positive pictures about uh, uh, about a place positive pictures that really uh, uh, and uh, adds value to the tourism experience when we are visiting a, a destination and as students and also uh, this is just an example of uh, negative pictures these are negatives uh, sorry and these are the positive and so they use visual data and also they comment uh, each picture. This is in Portuguese because the, the exercise was done in Portuguese. But in each picture, I have the comments, and then I can um, have this picture uh, to WebKDA, and then I can analyze also the textual data with the software uh, WebKDA. And this is just another example uh, where I use cartoons in a subject that I teach. And just this another uh, uh, example where you can use we can use, uh, for instance visual data has, has cartoons cartoons about tourism and then this also ha has a methodology uh, uh, where i ask the students the source of these cartoons we use uh, an international competition of tourism cartoons a very interesting one that is held uh, since 2007 in uh, 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 the international competition uh, of tourism cartoons held uh, in turkey and, and then we have a lots of cartoons and a lots of interesting uh, visual data to work with the students. Uh, what, what, what we can think about tourism, but based on uh, images. And then we have uh, uh, this example from the tourism academic research, the content analysis that I did, uh, that I've been using. This is an example that I, uh, I would like to share with you that I did in my PhD thesis and I, I also uh, apply it in another uh, article uh, about, uh, um, about, for instance, about Iran as a destination that I work also with some uh, with other colleagues on these topics. So the first stage of the co visual content analysis applied to photos, we need to have a starting question all, always has we, we need to have in our research. So this was my starting question. And then from our starting question, uh, since uh, this is the starting question, and then uh, since the Alqueva Lake, because I study uh, the Alqueva Lake, is a lake here in Portugal, uh, an artificial lake, and I would like to explore more about lakes, about tourism experiences on lakes. And then I, we, we need to start with a starting question. Uh, so this, these are some questions that we need to do to ourselves. Is a visual data analysis useful in dealing with the problem? Will the visual data have new perspectives to the study, new looks, new directions? In short, it will give value to the study. In my case, I wanted to study lakes and then I realized I can use photos from, uh, from, from uh, lake lubbers, from people that really enjoy doing uh, holidays near lakes, lakes, not in sea, but in, uh, the, uh, in near lakes. And I realized that it could be interesting to analyze their photos. So these are just some, <laughs> A uh, question that we should ask to ourselves. This is just the example, the, the, uh, the lake located in Portugal, some pictures and what I did. So first of all, of course, the literature review is very important. This is just some examples. Of course, I will not uh, explore now this, but I want, want, I want to, 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 to mention that uh, I just use, if you don't mind, uh, I will try to use, uh, well, to, in order to sign here, the in my um, when I started to do the literature review, I realized that there were some articles that use textual, textual and visual data, and uh, they use content analysis. That's why I uh, uh, try to um, uh, explain these in my thesis. I was using photos because uh, this could be an interesting approach. That's why I'm just I have this here in order to to, 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 to uh, share with you this message that is really important to explain all the steps when you, we are using visual data. And then uh, in, in, in my case, I realize in my empirical, uh, when I try to assess my object of study, I could use a mixed approach 
research and in qualitative metrics, I can use textual and photos. And this is, in, this is expressed in my conceptual model. Uh, that I could use photos in order to understand uh, what, what, what is the framework, what is the rational, uh, uh, why am I using uh, photos. And uh, this is just the, 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 the stages of the research uh, where I use, I sorry, the, I went to a website and I did content analysis of text and pictures and then I use the photo, photo elicitation technique. And I will just so show to you, these were my research question, uh, my research questions, and I realized that I could use visual data. Uh, and then the second stage, I tried to figure out what will be the best source of my visual data. And then we, we need to find our images and define the role of visual data. And then we can start doing these questions. What is the representativeness of sources? And what is the source uh, selection type? How, how, how many is random stratified by clusters? What kind of pictures are we are going to use by convenience? How many pictures? It's not easy to, to, to explain this. And are we using the visual data as a single corpus or complement to textual data? In my case, I use a Lake Luber's portal because I tried to justify that this was a portal with pictures from, uh, from lake lovers, from people that really enjoy being near lakes and where they take pictures and they comment the pictures. And uh, that was my source. I defined my unit of analysis that were photos about lakes from lake lovers. And the role of visual data in my case will complement the textual data because um, that it will have value. And then the sample type in the end of the slides mentioned that the sample type uh, in my case was stratified and convenience. Uh, I went by the geographical criteria and I, I choose the, the, the two most important lakes of uh, the, the, the countries in Europe. I, I, I explain why I was using uh, lakes in Europe, mainly Finland, also Hungary, Poland, where they have interesting lakes where, and where they have tourism related to lakes. So in my case, I use, uh, uh, this, this, this was my sample. I use a description of lakes here, and then I use photos of lake, lakes, 124 uh, photos. And then I use the pictorial content analysis. And this is the, the sample of the photos, uh, the countries and the lakes per country. Uh, and that is very, also very important. We try to, to explain what is the sample of our photos uh, and what the photos that we used. And <clears throat> defining the coding procedure, that is, this is related with the, the analysis of the photos. And I will try to, to explain this uh, with the software. And then this is just some uh, things that I did with the software. This is just a picture, uh, a picture that I uh, 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 imported to the software. And then we have here boxes that, where the, the software does this. And then we try, we uh, uh, describe the picture, interpret the picture, and then we can codify this. So we, we can coding, we can code our interpretation, and then we, we can create codes in, uh, in the software. And as we code our textual data, we can also code the, 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 the descriptions and interpretations that we do uh, uh, of every picture that we use in our work. And this is the methodology that I, I use. If you, if you would like to, I, I, have, I would like to share also with you. I have uh, the, uh, the thesis in English that explain this in more detail. Uh, and also it will be in the, in the final references the, uh, where I explain this. So just start, I, I, I have to conclude the webinar and this is what extracted I just uh, want to share with you. So the, all, the, all these were elements that extract from the pictures, from uh, the boxes of the pictures, uh, blue sky, pictures where blue sky appeared I, and then I, I use the software and then I use the Excel in order to help me. And I realized that most of the pictures, the 124 pictures, 30, th 39 uh, pictures used uh, uh, blue sky in their picture, vegetation uh, of the shoreline, let's camp and mountains, 
water's blue color, and that and this comes from my from the description of the pictures. And then to 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 conclude, uh, this is this is another project the the about Iran, Iran. Iran as a, a destination uh, where I also use WebKDA with the pictures that were uh, took from TripAdvisor and comments, uh, uh, also the comments from uh, the pictures in order to help us to understand better what were the impressions about uh, the main uh, attractions uh, uh, in this uh, very interesting uh, country. And the, all these, the list, this is were the list of motives, the elements, for each attraction in Iran that were extracted from the software. And then uh, to uh, in order to conclude, uh, and I would like also, uh, I have some screenshots about the software and then I can go to also to the software. I use WebKDA, of course, we have an, uh, other uh, um, qualitative software that really helped me. And uh, this is just uh, the, the site of the software. And uh, the, these are the main, uh, the main areas of the software. And then I just want to uh, help you to explain better what I did. Uh, we can create a project in the software. We can import our photos to the software uh, the, where uh, uh, we can have our photos uh, um, in, also in the cloud uh, or uh, uh, from our computer. We can import the photos to the software. We can describe and interpret the photos. Uh, and then we can start to coding uh, this material. And then <clears throat> this is just a, a brief a general overview of uh, the, the, the software. Uh, these, these are, this is in English. The software is in three languages, Portuguese, uh, English, and Spanish. Uh, and this is an Eng the English version where we have the, in the, the sources, the coding, and the questioning and and then here uh, when we want to insert our photos we insert our photos to internal uh, sources uh, uh, i will try to show you this uh, we we create a project and we can also this is a, interesting because it, it's a <clears throat> it's a collaborative software that is in the cloud we we don't need to install in our computer it's in the cloud and we can share uh, the, the, our projects with other uh, researchers. And if you have uh, more questions, of course, and then we, you can to contact the, the, the software itself. But in my case, it, was, it has been very useful because I can share the projects with the, 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 the colleagues that uh, I have been working. And then this is just the list of some projects that I have. And then we, we, we start to create a project and, and then we insert our pictures in the software. In the software, this is this uh, uh, this is um, uh, these are texts. Texts can be interviews, textual data, and then these are the pictures that I will analyze. Uh, of course, this is uh, very easy uh, to do. We we insert the pictures, and we can have the textual data and the visual data. For instance, in this project, I have uh, these photos. Uh, here and these texts in the internal sources and then uh, i um started to um started to work upload the photos uh, in this case uh, we need to be aware that uh, uh, we have a maximum size of five megabytes per image uh, the image must be in jpeg or png and then we can import very easily the photos and then in the software, software, the software, we can see these pictures. For instance, this is an exercise that I do, did, did with my students. I have here the picture, and then I started to describe the pictures with these boxes. And then I have here the description of these pictures. For instance, these pictures are about uh, uh, the, uh, an exercise that the students do. Uh, they are uh, hosts uh, of uh, conferences, and I need to realize that their posture, their gestures, their smile is very important. And that's why I started to describe this in my picture. So in this software, we can do a description and interpretation of the photo. And then this is another picture. Uh, uh, that I describe also the environment and the secretaria, uh, and then we should have some uh, uh, some um, some um, 
uh, I apologize, some, we need to be careful uh, how it is the secretariat uh, of the, the, the conferences. Uh, it must be of a clean space, uh, uh, everything is in order. And I can see these in my pictures. And then the software allows us also to create some memos directly and associated with pictures. And then uh, we, uh, we can start to code uh, the pictures in the software. And then we can have three codes, three codes, and the combination of both. And that's why uh, this is just a, a screenshot where we can very easily try to cut. We, we can create our categories. So it depends if we are using a more deductive approach or an deductive approach. If you use a deductive approach, we have our structure of our code system already. And then we started to code uh, the, the description of the photos. And so we can create categories and subcategories in a very easy way because we can cut, copy, uh, past, paste, erase, uh, uh, and uh, have the, the results and the outputs through a code map, PDF or Excel. And this is just some the, 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 the next step, the codification, the coding, I apologize, the, the, the coding. Uh, and then I have here the description of the photos and then uh, I started to code these descriptions into my categories. So that's why we have here the photos, we describe, it, we describe them and then we categorize our descriptions uh, and then we have information to our codes and that's why this is a, the kind of uh, analysis that uh, the, 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 the software can uh, do and can help us. But of course, we need to do ourselves this, this analysis. This is not yet artificial intelligence and probably in the future also with learning machine. That will be another step for visual data analysis that is already being done, but I, I, I'm not very aware of that. I need to read more about this topic. And then this is just some example I'm just finishing about some outputs that you can uh, using your works. Example one, the PDF. This is just the categorization, the categorization, the coding system that I use uh, when I code my pictures. And then I could uh, use this PDF in my project uh, also and to, 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 to have a figure and also to validate the research. And this is the code map with my codes, the codes, the, co the coding system. And this is a, a code map that allows us to understand the coding system. And then we can also use this output to, the, 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 to our project. And for instance, when we analyze the pictures, and we have the comments and the description. We can also uh, have a PDF from the software, and then we can use this in our uh, uh, in our uh, projects as a PDF. So this is just uh, uh, the software always uh, also allow us to uh, uh, um, do some word clouds, the most frequent words. For instance, when I describe my pictures, I can have a word cloud about the most frequent words. And I, I can ask that to the to the software, and then I I conclude my presentation. Uh, uh, and I've, I this is just some uh, books about the visual methodologies. And um, thank you very much for your presence. And we can ask, we can discuss, uh, uh, and uh, you can ask some questions. Thank you for uh, your presence and for participating. This is my uh, email and um, I will send my slides also to, to Sonia with the, the references. The, the, the WebKDA, I have here my projects, as I mentioned. I don't know if you have any question, but meanwhile, I can show you something. For instance, the project that I have, uh, that, that I uh, show to you. Uh, for instance, this one, we have here the projects and then we can go to the project. And then this is the, the web PDA now is in English. And then as I, I show to you, these are the internal sources where I can uh, upload the files. You see, I'm going, I go to the source and then I can have these images. But I don't know if you have, if we, meanwhile, if you have a, a question, I can yes. answer Anna, the question. There, yes, yes. there are uh, Flip Gimenez has two questions for you in, in the chat. If you want, I can read them for you if it's easier. Yes, if you don't mind, Sonia, it's uh, easier. The, the first question from Philippe is, um, I would like 
uh, you to share some examples of interpretation results that visual content analysis helped you? I'm not sure. Did you understand the question? Or yes. Want... Yes, yes. Uh, and the, the second question is how to analyze face expressions regardless of the ethic issues? Yes. Uh, well, two very two, two, two interesting questions. The first question is, uh, the, for instance, let me show you here. Um, I, I will go here to, if you don't mind, I will go here to this project about uh, the Iran, about uh, Iran as a destination, as I mentioned, and, and then I will try to explain better. Uh, as I mentioned, these are these are the photos. The, the, sorry, these are the textual. The, the textual here I have the comments about the photos, and then here I have the photos. And then, uh, for instance, when I uh, go to this, uh, th this is a photo because one of the main uh, attractions uh, and, uh, and that uh, tourists uh, like to go when they are in uh, Iran, uh, in Isfahan, is the music uh, museum. And this comes from, well, we need to explain this in our work, why we are using uh, these kind of attractions, okay? We need to, to, to explain that. But then I uh, uh, import the photos about these main attractions. Uh, and then for instance, in this photo I have here, just, I will just show you to you, if you don't mind here, I will just, for instance, uh, in, uh, based on these photos, I, it just to give me, uh, um, for instance, related to the museum. And then I realized that uh, uh, when the tourists post the photo, they mention, they mention this and all the, all the pictures, the pictures that they took uh, uh, show uh, the musicians in the museum uh, playing, uh, um, playing local, typical instruments uh, of, of, uh, of that region. And this allows me, uh, when I started to analyze each picture, uh, I, w I did these comments, for instance, musicians giving a concert in a museum. And I have another picture and another picture from the museum. And, she, and you see, uh, I, I, here, I can, st and then I started to code this. Uh, in this in this case i didn't code but another in, in other projects i started to code this uh, uh, and trying to explain me for instance uh, if this is more related uh, if my code system yeah indeed in this project i use uh, we use a, a, a pre schema uh, uh, with five dimensions and i try to uh, see if th these pictures if these pictures, what I saw in these pictures, when we try, uh, when we try to comment and describe the pictures, if uh, this is, uh, this, this corroborates the, um, the, the, the coding system that we did. Uh, I don't know if I, I, if I am explaining to you, sorry, I will just, for instance, these, these were our coding system. You see, the, we, we, we create, we create these codes. This is based on literature review. Uh, I will try to explain. Uh, when we experience a destination, and then when we try to, uh, to interpret it, what the tourist uh, says uh, or, 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 or um, posts in terms of visual data, we can, we can divide it in five categories. Emotions, sensory perceptions, intellectual comprehension, active participation, and memories. And these were uh, our these these were our coding system. And when we were analyzing these pictures, we described them and we tried to see if these pictures, together with the textual analysis, were in line. And you see, if if I come here. Uh, these are the references. This, these are all the units of analysis or the segments that also that comes from the textual data and also from visual data that were coded in this um, code uh, emotions. You see, and then here I can see our amazing trip to Iran. Amazing, amazing trip um, brought the place life to us. So uh, these are uh, experiences that are very related with emotions. And then the, the software allows me to code this 
regarding my coding system or not or not and i can also do that with the pictures i don't know if i explain to you because i can code the textual data and also i can code my interpretation and this could help me for instance in my case i've been using textual data with visual data and then can corroborate can reinforce the textual data or the visual data uh, can uh, bring something new I, I will just give you an example uh, in terms of the lake tourism uh, uh, when i saw the photos the photos show me uh, photos about lakes about water about the, the, the relations between water and the sky and that was something that the tourists mentioned in the textual data but the pictures really helped me and when i do this and describe the photos and when i interpret the photos this heads this heads value to my research because i can also code the interpretation of the photos and also i can uh, uh, bring these to my project i don't know if i answered the, the first question and then the second question is related with the ethical issues yes uh, it, for instance when we are using these uh, pictures uh, we must pay attention with this of course uh, and then uh, for instance if, if we if we show an example of a pictures of course when we we, can, we should not uh, 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 we should not show the facial uh, aspect the facial the, the face of the, the the person so this is very important to take um, pay attention to the ethical issues uh, for instance in in uh, brazil i know uh, and, and, uh, and there are participants probably from also from brazil uh, that we have ethical co a committee that uh, each project has to pass from that uh, co uh, committee and uh, so that's why i mentioned this is a very interesting topic within visual methods the ethical issues related with the use of visual data i just want to show you some uh, to say something had more one one, one more thing because in my in the conference from tourism tourism conferences related to tourism uh, i have i have been hearing different uh, different uh, uh, opinions uh, some opinions say that the, the, the photos that are in a, in a, in a public in social media are public like facebook and tripadvisor and so on and then we can use those pictures in the research because they are public and then some uh, there are other thoughts that say oh it's not that we should pay attention when we are using this picture so i must say to you in my opinion we are just in the phase of uh, trying to consolidate the ethical aspects uh, but of course when we use for instance when i use the, the cartoons in my project i ask permission to show the to to show to to uh, use the cartoons in my project to the organizing so we can try to mitigate asking the permission uh, in order to use the images also i don't know if i answer i apologize if okay i i think so uh but uh, we our time is stretching a little bit but we have time to answer two more questions if that's possible anna um, yes, yes, of course. There is a question from Ilinka. She is uh, asking, uh, is autocoding possible with WebQDA? If, if so, have you used it? Uh, I spell uh, autocoding. Autocoding. Uh, no, I, think, it's, it's not I think she is uh, asking us if there is a process of making uh, the coding of the data uh, automatically. Uh, automatically. Yes, there, there is one, one way of doing it, which is uh, only relatively automatically, which is the, um, the process of uh, automatic encoding of internal fonts from Excel files to descriptors. Uh, we can send them the link to mm. the, the, the article in our blog, which explains how you can automatically code your data from an Excel file. Uh, and that's uh, a way of doing it. Uh, we will send you the link to the, the blog article tomorrow, Ilinka, so that you can read it. It's in English, so you can read it and learn how to do it in WebQDA. Okay. Uh, and then there is a question from Tia. Uh, she is asking regarding visual methods uh, you've explained using photos which means unmoving objects 
what if I want to use YouTube videos as data? I'm working yes. on YouTube videos as my research data right now, and I would like to have your thought using the software. Can we use the yes, software yes. for analyzing YouTube videos? Yes. Uh, Sonia, uh, sorry, can you uh, mention, uh, say the name? Uh, 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 it's a question from Tia. Ah, Tia, yes. Thank you for, also for your question, Tia. As I mentioned, Tia, I, I, did, I didn't have the chance really to have a project based on uh, the, the video, video analysis. Or videography, video analysis, well, the videography is the field and the visual analysis is the technique. But yes, you can use you can also use uh, in WebKDA, uh, my experience with the software, of course, uh, we, I need to uh, explore more, but in WebKDA, we, you can use textual data and also uh, visual data. And regarding the visual, you can use photos or other types of images, but also videos. And it's very easy, you can go to the external uh, for, for, uh, sources here, and then you can, uh, you see here, link the the video you can have the video and have the link the video in the in the cloud or directly uh, from the you from a, a platform like YouTube or Vimeo and sometimes it's preferable for us to download the video because sometimes the video does not suddenly disappear from the platform and so you can easily uh, download the uh, upload the the the, the video uh, to this to this uh, field uh, is considered an external sources and then you can have your video here and start to uh, analyze the video uh, uh, describing what you are uh, hearing and also step by step you can uh, stop the video describe and then as I mentioned with the photos you can also code can code your descriptions about the video so it's very easy. Uh, I, I didn't have the chance to use it, it but I have been uh, exploring also and also hearing uh, other colleagues that use uh, the software and other software, but particularly the WebKDA, and they use a lot the WebKDA also for uh, videos. I think that uh, I have a slide here, the last slides, because the, web, the, the, the WebKDA page, website, you have also resources and you also have tutorials, but Sonia also can add something uh, yes. that can help I, you. I have, while you were answering, I shared a link for the English tutorial where uh, you can learn how to use the external sources but there are also articles in our blog. There are the webinars that you can check uh, on the YouTube channel. But um, yes, if you have more specific questions, you can always send us an email and we will answer uh, to you. Uh, so I think, Anna, we, we can call it a day. <laughs> uh, what do you say? 